Hey everybody, how you doing? Uh, the following video is my first first interview with Dr. Charlie Ward. Uh, we've had this interview set up for a while. It got pushed back for a week, and um, I got up at uh, about around four o'clock this morning to uh, get ready and do this interview, and didn't get to sleep much last night. So I was all over the place in this interview. If you watch my my YouTube channel, and you've seen me speak on camera, you've seen me do a lot better job uh, keeping my keeping my facts in place and speaking a little bit more in a, uh, a linear fashion. I guess the coffee's done. Uh, but the good thing is I had the, uh, had the opportunity to, to speak with Charlie, try to advocate for targeted individuals, people that have been illegally watch listed, and go through uh, organized stalking, harassment, gang stalking, being targeted, um, and uh, wish wish it would have went a little bit better. It's tough to explain something so complicated, something so intricate, uh, with so many compartments and so many so many different caveats in an hour, and have a uh, you know normal conversation with somebody. Charlie's a pretty laid back guy and just likes to have a, you know, a normal conversation, like he said, like a couple of guys in the pub. And it's tough to convey all of the information that you want to, um, to share with people in, in one hour doing that. And, uh, like I said, I'm half asleep right now. It's, uh, well, it's seven o'clock in the morning now, but we started at a uh, little bit before five o'clock or five about five fifteen, and uh, I did the best I could with the cognitive skills that I have going this morning. So here's our interview. Set up my own platform, which is drcharlieward.com, and this morning we passed over six hundred thousand subscribers. Amazing! Um, Congratulations, and I, I, I got to tell you, man, I really appreciate what you're doing because there's a lot of us that are really trying to get information out, um, especially in the targeted individual community. It's almost impossible for us to sometimes even get an internet connection, let alone get on a um, get get an interview with somebody that has any type of following. And, uh, you know, their, their goal is to keep you completely isolated and uh, to have the opportunity to do something like this is, you know, I really, I really, really appreciate this. And there's a lot of people that um, appreciate it also. Well, we're, we're in the stage right now where we were going to release it yesterday, but we're releasing it today. We've got 1,500 documents that were submitted in court in South Africa. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. That's being done today. The uh, uh, the reason we didn't do it yesterday was quite simple. Um, the gentleman and his wife, um, who are the whistleblowers, have got their names, addresses, and phone numbers in the documentation. Oh, okay. Yeah, that might be something to uh, uh, so take. So we, we have to block those out. Um, so the, yeah, there's a, just this identity of people that we just need to protect. Um, yeah, that's that's understandable because there are definitely people that uh, go after people like us. That uh... definitely, De there definitely are. And look, it wouldn't take a rocket scientist to work out who these people are that have given us the information, because there's only a limited number of people that have access to that kind of information. Correct. Um, but uh, so we're we're in an interesting time. But the the confidence I have right now is the fact that uh, Donald Trump is protected by a higher power he's got to be and those that, and those that are supporting him are on the same uh, the light workers the, the digital warriors the those people that are determined to get the truth out there in a, in a very very muddy pond if you like are also being given extra protection from from above i'll, I'll tell you what a few years ago i i probably wouldn't have agreed with you but if I didn't have somebody looking out for me, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've I've come close to not being here several times. 
several times. You and me both. Yeah, this, I'm sitting in my kitchen right now, got my sliding glass door uh, to my backyard right here. Somebody shot that out just about two months ago. Found the, wow. the bullet bounced off my refrigerator and was sitting and laying on the kitchen floor over here. Um, yeah, it, go, it goes on and on and on. They've tried to run us off the road, uh, my daughter and I, uh, with big rig, you know, semi trucks. Uh, it been poisoned. It, it, all, all of it. Every, everything that you, you've seen in the movies. <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, you know. Well, I've, I'll, I'll tell you a little story here uh, on that particular matter because I've never told, well, I have told a few people, but certainly not on this channel. Um, going back many years ago, well, my, my, my father always used to say, if you live by the sword, you, you'll die by the sword. That's mm -hmm. biblical. But, uh, um, when I went to South Africa, when I arrived in Johannesburg, at the airport was called Jan Smuts then, in the old days, but I arrived there, and the guy that I was working for there, one of the first things he did was there were three of us, and he gave us all guns and ammunition to protect ourselves. And for me, that was alien. And I actually took my gun and ammunition and put it in the safe and locked it away and never ever used it from day one, the moment I arrived there. The other two guys enjoyed using the gun. Um, and it wasn't just for game. They were shooting at people oh, okay. to scare them. Hmm. And I disagreed with that right from the start. Um, they'd, they'd see certain people hiding in a hedge or what have you, and they'd be shooting at the hedge just for fun, um, with no, no respect for life whatsoever. But I was very confident in the fact nobody ever, um, threatened me when I was there. I used common sense, but, uh, you know, the, the house that we lived in was in a very, very nice area and we, it was behind secure gates and I didn't take unnecessary risks. Having said that, I did go to Soweto in South Johannesburg um, and was shown around there. And people say I was absolutely mad for doing that, but I went in there with an open heart and a clean heart. Anyway, these two guys that were shooting at people just for fun, whether they killed anybody, I don't know. There's a possibility because of the way that they were gun happy. But ironically, 10 years later, they were both killed by ricochet bullets. Hmm. in a bank at the same time. That reminds me of the, um, the story about the guy that invented the roundabout. And his, sure. uh, his... Sorry, I, I just remembered um, your story about your son. I didn't want to... Um, to yeah, that's okay. Something. That's okay. The, the guy that invented the, uh, the roundabout, his son actually died in a car accident in a roundabout. You know, it's yeah. weird the, the way some of that happens. So, no, I, I'm, I'm real careful when I, when I start to say something. Um, one of the things that's used on targeted individuals is direct the conversation or trigger words or different things like that to, to re-traumatize you um, from a traumatic event that you've been through in your life. And as soon as I said that, I remembered what... I've, what I've chosen in my life to remember the good things about him yeah. and bury the bad things because he was... He was what we would call a good naughty boy. Yeah. He did lots of naughty things, but it, I, I choose to remember the good things. So when people talk about him, I get a warm feeling inside rather than a cold feeling inside. Good. Uh, about the loss. Um, my expectation of gain is far greater than my fear of loss. Uh, of gaining something, of learning something. Of, um, he made an impression while he was here. He, he, he wasn't here for a long time. He was here for 27 years, but... Uh, he made an impression on people um, because he was a character of life. Um, and we all, at the end of the day, you know, I've, I've had messages coming through to me where somebody's committed suicide. So um, that's always very, very sad. You know, I've lost my mother when I was young. I lost my brother. Uh, he was younger than me and I've lost my firstborn son. So I understand the concept of death and how people die. Um, there's not, there's not really a nice way other than an old person 
in their 80s going to, uh, going to bed and not waking up. That's probably the nicest thing that could happen. Yeah. And if it's a granddad and grandma going to bed together and get, dying together, that would be almost perfection, like my own grandparents did. My grandmother died. My grandfather was going to the cupboard to get a glass of whiskey because she wasn't feeling well. And he died at the cupboard. They reckon there was half an hour between them. Uh, and they were in their in their 90s. Yeah, that's um, usually that's when, about as close. When one person passes away that old, uh, that they've been together that long, usually it, within a couple months, the other one does, you know. So, but I, 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 I understand what you're saying. I've had a lot of loss in my life. Um, my dad, but it was, uh, well, we were told it was uh, suicide. But yeah. I, I don't believe that. I, he was shot in the head. Uh, my son's mother died the morning of my birthday. Um, it, it goes on. I won't even go through all of it, but I've had a lot of loss in my life, and a lot of it has not been um, organic events. In my, the, one, uh, the one thing I did learn, I, I went to a very dark place when I lost my son at the start, and I didn't believe in, I, at the time, I didn't believe in the mediums and the, all these people with it, uh, uh, but I've, uh, and tarot card readers, I didn't believe any of it. I didn't believe in any of that stuff at all. Um, but I was desperate, and I, came, I went to see somebody because I was feeling in a desperately dark place. Um, there was other aspects as well that, that made it incredibly dark. And I went to see somebody that they opened up an area of my life that only I knew anything about. I'd never told anybody about it. And it was about dreams that I used to have when I was younger that I never shared with anybody. And they basically told me these dreams that, that I'd actually buried away. But my father um, prayed with me when I was about 12 years old that they wouldn't happen again, and they didn't. But they, that I never told my father what they were. Um, so when somebody actually explained my nightmares as a child, then I, for some reason I was then able to open up to deal with bereavement and to deal with mourning. Um, it opened a part of me inside that it's, it's almost like it, men very much departmentalize most things in their life. They put things in boxes. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I basically put that box away and shut it, but it needed to be open to resolve what was inside it. And once I'd done that, it allowed me to, to move on in my life. And, um, that was a fascinating part of my life, and I, I'm under, I've understood um, understood more things by opening up my mind to spirituality, numerology, symbology, astrology. All of these things have been a huge asset. Um, and I, because you you were in the in the air force, were you not? Correct. Yes, I was, uh, I was a crash fire rescue firefighter, active duty for five years, and then I moved from that into journalism. I was a multimedia journalist, so photo, video, broadcast journalism, website design, Photoshop, all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, I did, uh, yeah, spent some, time, spent some time in the military. Well, that's, I'm a, I'm a huge believer, especially with the United Kingdom, because a, a lot of men in the United Kingdom have turned into jellyfish, and a lot of them don't like me saying it. They get offended by it, but they get offended by anything. It's that's by um, design. It's by design. It, it's they, by design. They, they they don't want real men that can make real decisions and and um, stand up for other people. And I, Correct. I you, you should see it here. Oh my God! It, it's yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. So. I think I think national service is a good thing because it teaches you respect. Um, it teaches you so much um, in being a man, stand, making decisions and standing by them, being accountable. Um, I, I, I went. Sorry. No, I, I was going to say I always say the Air Force was my dad. My my yeah. I grew up. My mom raised me. I was an only child. Um, my dad wasn't around. I uh, sure. just saw him every year or so, if that, and um, I didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of guidance, a lot of uh, structure, 
And when I, when I went through the Air Force, I finally learned some of that. And that's, that's how I beha became a man. You know, I, I learned uh, responsibility and uh, learned what it was like to be yelled at and uh, just have to take it and, you know, do my job and get, get things done. And um, yeah. so, but, okay, so I, I know we probably only have about an hour here to, mm -hmm. to talk. And what I have to tell you and the rest of your audience, there is so much information that explaining all of this to everyone in under an hour is absolutely impossible. So I just kind of want to start with the foundation of what I uh, want to um, get across. And I'm, I'm going to try to get through it. I'm already I'm having a hard time finding my words this morning. It's it's early here. It's 530 in the morning. Um, and uh, I didn't get to bed too early last night. So but uh, I've been documenting and reporting for the last three years about what I've been going through. Um, I realized in April, May of 2017 that events in my life were not organic. Things were happening that were contrived and it, there, were, there was so much chaos and uh, loss and, and just different things going on that I, I knew it couldn't be Uh, it, it could it, it couldn't be possible that these things were happening and uh, I started researching got online I started trying to network with some people ask some questions figure out what was going on and I learned that I was what's called a targeted individual and uh, boy I'm having a tough time this morning okay come on Mike let's go here <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, uh, I found a lady named Karen Milton Stewart. She was, a, uh, she was an NSA analyst. She'd worked for the NSA for 28 years, and she was describing basically the exact same thing that was happening in my life. People were following her around in the restaurants, um, at, in, in traffic. Whoa. Hey, Willis. Whenever I do an interview, there, there's noise outside of my house and um, my dog barks and stuff like that. It's all right, buddy. Come here. Come here. Um, so I've, I've spent thousands of hours of research. I've networked with a lot of different um, intel agents. I've, I spent the day with a, uh, a guy named John D'Souza. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the name. He's a former, uh, retired 25-year FBI special agent. Uh, he taught me how to investigate this like an FBI agent would uh, and be a true investigator as opposed to a fact finder. Um, so I've put a lot of time and effort into researching, documenting, and reporting what I've been through. But then on top of that, I've also experienced this personally for years and years and years and years and years. So um, I learned that I'm there are a lot of people that are going through what, what I've experienced. And this isn't something that is just happening in, here in the United States. This is a global thing. It's happening all over the world. Uh, but here in the United States, it's basically a, a genocide program. Well, it's, it's the same all over the world, but I've, I've figured out how it's being run and operated here in the United States. And since I'm from here, this is the only place I've lived. I've traveled to you know, different places in the world, but I focus basically on how this is taking place here in the United States. So now I'm gonna kind of jump around here because there's no way to explain this whole thing in a linear fashion. Um, there's so much information that um, it's impossible just to, to do it all in a, in a timeline in one timeline so and also what I'm going to do is for your listeners I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of investigative journalists you know citizen journalists di digital soldiers people that will take this information and do deep dives into it and and research this information and that's what I want people to do because it's probably out of all of the because this is the only thing I focus on I focus on a lot of the other uh, topics that are going on in the world and what we're all going through, what you're experiencing, what everybody else is, is going through. Um, but this is one of the most important things 
that, that people can understand because what I've been through and other targeted individuals are going through is a beta test. They're, they're testing us to see how this works, to roll this out to the rest of the world, basically. Um, okay, so this has been going on for decades. This is a, uh, a thing that the, the deep state, the cabal, the, the whoever you want to call them, whatever name you want to give them, has done to people for a long time. Um, but here in the United States, in 2012, George Soros paid Obama, the Obama administration, around $30 million to update watch listing guidance. And when they did that, they basically took actual terrorists off of our terrorist watch list, removed them from the terrorist watch list, and actually inserted them into positions of influence, into uh, intel agencies like the you know the FBI the CIA Department of Homeland Security etc and they they put a bunch of patriotic empowered individuals um, citizen journalists whistleblowers etc on this Department of Homeland Security watch list and designated a lot of people as terrorists which basically takes away all of the rights that we have as human beings as American citizens and we're free game for them to do anything to us. And this program basically is, is designed to torment the targeted individual in every aspect of their life and drive them to, drive them to acting out, I, guess, I can't think of a better word, but acting out in uh, violence, uh, committing suicide, being, uh, being put in a mental institution, um, imprisoned um, to to quiet you down to just get rid of you it's um, this program is like a human garbage disposal for for the elite uh, to get rid of all of the people that they don't want talking about different things um, and, and that's happened with in, in my opinion about 140, 150,000 American veterans, people that were deployed to different areas in the world, they might have seen too much, known too much, and instead of um, helping those veterans when they got back from war, they put them on this through this program, and they ended up committing suicide. And it's not just veterans; there's all kinds of people that are put on these lists, like a, you know, like I said, whistleblowers, journalists, and just to just to clarify, I'm not a whistleblower. I had a secret clearance, which secret is entry level. It goes secret, top secret, and then a whole bunch of letters. And then uh, as, as we, well, I can't say as we know, as a lot of us um, assume Q is the highest level clearance. Um, but uh, yeah, I, so I've, I've been privy to some classified information, but I've never once divulged any class, classified information that I've been given. So all of the information that I'm giving is from my personal experience and my own research, and um, that's that's that. So, uh, man, I did a I did a video yesterday, and this, all this stuff was just rolling off my tongue. That this morning I'm 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 hitting a, a block here. So that that could be that I could be getting help with that, with mm -hmm. with having a hard time. I'm I'm not sure if you. Have you have you heard about this before, Charlie? Have you have you ever yep. heard the term targeted? You yeah, have. You've heard the term targeted yep. individual and gang stalking. I, look, I think my, uh, people who've been awake and aware as to what's going on have known very very for, for, for ten years that if you stood up against the Obamas or the Clintons or the Bushes, suddenly you either committed suicide or met your death unexpectedly, and that's from the other side of the Atlantic. We can see very very clearly that anybody that stood up against them, the Clintons were probably the worst. I mean, anybody who stood up against them, suddenly, within six months, they died of a heart attack. Um, they'd been committed suicide. They'd been in a road accident. They'd been in a plane crash. Um, there was, it, was, it was ridiculous that the numbers were no longer single figures. They were no longer double figures. We were into three figures. It's a long list. It, and, it's a long, and, long list. And how many coincidences uh, does it take before it becomes statistically impossible? 
I totally agree with you. I'm going to ask you one question. I'm going to put you right on your toes now. Yes, sir. My research establishes that Q was founded by JFK in 1961, 62. Same, mine too. Uh, this is just a Charlie thought. How about the fact that Donald Trump created Anon? I'm not aware of this. He created Anon? No, I'm just asking the question. So it's become Q Anon. Uh huh. And I just wonder because JFK Jr. and Donald Trump were very good friends. We know that, uh, I know factually that JFK created Q. I don't know factually if Donald Trump Q, uh, created Anon. So, because Q became back to life again three to four years ago, but became Q and on. And I wonder if Q has been revitalized as Q and on by the anon part might be Trump. I don't know. I'm just asking a question. Well, I, I mean, for those of us that have been following, I found Q and on in, uh, was it October, November of 2017, right yep. at the, right about the time this big, what I call the big wave hit in my life, when the, uh, the massive, the massive amount of organized stalking and harassment and chaos ensued in my life, I found QAnon. And I've been following yeah. since then. And yeah. it, it's um, out of the, the Truman Show, I don't know if you're familiar with the movie, The Truman yeah. Show, that is my life. QAnon is the most truth and honesty that, that I've received in my entire life. It, yep. it, everything that, that they, they post and put out to, to the public is, I, I, it, it's, the only, it's the only solid thing that, I, that I've ever had to, to go on. Um, and they have, they've put out some information that only certain people that have experienced certain things could understand what they're talking about. And they've put some information out specifically about what I'm talking about here, about target, but they don't say targeted individuals. They don't, you know, they don't use that term, um, but they, they, some of their drops, and I've saved all the drops in a folder that, that, that correlate exactly with, with what I'm talking about here. So, but yeah, I, Donald Trump is Q plus. If, if you've been following long enough, I mean, it's it's beyond beyond obvious if you're paying any kind of attention. And the only people that that will deny or uh, gaslight, you know, when we say stuff like this, are people that maybe know, and they they want to discredit what we're saying. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, the uh, biggest the biggest poke to me was when I when I asked a specific question. And they said to me, if he mentions your son's name tomorrow in his briefing, then you know it's true. Wait, say that again? I went from my people on the inside. Mm -hmm. I asked a certain question. They didn't answer the question. They said, if he mentions your son's name tomorrow in tomorrow's briefing, then you know it's true. If, if Donald Trump mentions your son's name? Yeah. And he mentioned your son's name? My son's name is Justin, and he walked onto stage with, a, with some papers and said, "We have the employment figures, Justin." Oh, okay, okay, I, okay. So I completely understand what you're talking about because I get information in long communications, comms, in long roundabout ways that it. If I explained some of these things to people, the way I get some of these comms, they'd never believe me. No. They'd, they'd never believe me. And I, um, I've had some confirmation from some of these comms that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm um, on the right path to keep going. Um, now, these, these comms are used by both the deep state to send yeah. me covert threats. I receive a death threat every day, every other day. Um, threats to burn my house down, to harm my children, to, you know, it goes on and on and on and on and on. But recently, over the last few months, the comms have started to change 
to where I'm getting positive information, I'm getting thank yous, I'm getting um, confirmation as to what's going on to kind of uh, keep me moving forward. Yeah. And uh, some, some of it, I mean, I won't even explain how, how it happens um, because it, it, it would take a while and a lot of people would probably go, yeah, right. Who would take that much time and effort? But th this is um, this is one of the biggest undertakings in recorded history that, that's happening yep. right now. And there there's a lot of uh, yeah. I'll just leave it at that. I'll just yeah. leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. Um, okay. So good. I'm glad that you've heard the term "targeted individual" and you you, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. So. Um, what I, what I said earlier, it's almost impossible to explain this in a, um, in a linear fashion and I'm going to mm -hmm. jump around and, but, um, that the way my brain works is nonlinear. I don't think black or white. I, I use my critical thinking skills and I think about the, the bigger picture and not just the facts, but you know, the caveats and the d different things like that. And because of that, I've, I've, put all of I, I put all of this together you know they call a lot of the uh, anons autists and you know I've got some of those traits those autistic uh, traits which I think is a, a positive you know they they talk about autistic people in a negative fashion um, yep. but I, I embrace it and um, it's really helped me connect a lot of these dots so okay so so that being said basically this i'll just i'll just start from the beginning from from where, where i figured this out this when they decided to to go full bore with this entire thing they decided to stage the largest false flag attack in in history which was 9 11. now i was a firefighter during 9 11. i wasn't in new york but i was a firefighter during that time long story short um, I met a bunch of the survivors that, uh, the firefighters that survived through that attack. Uh, what they, what they told me in person was different from what we were hearing on the news. That's when I got red pilled basically. So, um, and that's when I started researching, started posting things on social media, etc. So I'm going off on a tangent. So this, this started with 9-11, it was the problem, reaction, solution, paradigm. That was the, the problem, everybody reacted, and then the solution was to create the Patriot Act, which had nothing to do with um, empowering patriots. It was, uh, Joe Biden was one of the main authors of the Patriot Act, and the Patriot Act was to take away all of our rights and to be able to um, collect mass data on everyone. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the so Patriot Act mass data gathering uh, after that they created the Department of Homeland Security here in the United States yep. and everything is back for, backwards from what, what it sounds like so the Department of Homeland Security had nothing to do with actual security of our homeland uh, it was uh, DHS here in the United States was actually when it was created uh, they they consulted two different people that were uh so one of one of the people were was marcus wolf and yep. marcus wolf was one of the uh directors of the east german stasi secret police yep uh one of the other guys was i'm good not going to be able to pronounce this correctly but uh yevgenjic primakov he was a soviet union uh, kgb official so why would they why would they consult those two people when they created the Department of Homeland Security here in the United States, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and also this was after George Soros paid the Obama administration all of that money to update this watch uh, watch listing guidance. Um, so long long story short, Stasi so. German uh, or the Nazi SS, the brown shirts, the Stasi police, all of this type of policing, uh, domestic terrorism has taken place with communist or socialist governments. And now what we have here in the United States 
is a carbon copy of exactly what the Stasi did in, in Germany, which took place during the Obama administration. Now, I'm not a, even a, a left or right guy. I understand the concept of the deep state. It's, it's, not, about, it's not about that. It's about good versus evil, 100%. Um, so when, when I hear people fighting back and forth about the left and the right, I go, oh, think, think the bigger picture here, it's divide and conquer. The point I'll make there is, is that very, uh, very valid now. You have to understand that Donald Trump was always a Democrat. Absolutely. Yeah, and so was General Flynn. So, exactly. Yes. So the, the, all of this is just a smokescreen yes. between good and evil. It's, it's not between Democrat and Republican. It's between good and evil. And a lot of what he is doing are the same things that John F. Kennedy yep. would have done as a Democrat. Exactly. But Democrat is no yep. longer Democrat. Uh, the word liberal, it's liberal means a liberated person, a free person. Of course. The liberals have turned into complete communists and uh, Stasi type. Of, yeah, so, so we're on the same page. I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening to this are on the same page. And It's um, so important to point that out because people hide behind the fact, I'm a Democrat. So, so was Donald Trump. Exactly. He didn't like where the Democratic Party had gone. Yeah, that's changed. why he went. Yeah, it, it, uh, and it, the party's got nothing to do with it. The world we're moving into, they won't exist. Democrat, Republican, Conservative, Labour, they'll all be gone. And Liberals, they'll I all be gone. Can't wait, thank God. Yeah. Uh, and I, I feel it coming. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's I, coming. I can, I can feel it. There are things changing, and um, it, it sounds weird to say I can just feel it, but I, I think you understand that too. I feel something changing, like. Um, yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm I'm getting off on. Uh, Sorry. On to, no, it's okay. It's okay. This is you know, like you said, like a couple of couple of buddies chatting in the pub. You know that that yeah. it, going off on tangent happens without any alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a whole other story. I can't have any alcohol right now. Um, I I was arrested actually. F a, three weeks after I made one of my videos confronting. A corrupt police officer here and putting them on video and putting that video on on YouTube and she wasn't ready for the questions I had for her and right. she basically was making fun of targeted individuals here goes another tangent uh, but I have to explain this you know this is the way they use what we call lawfare to yeah. attack um, you know somebody uncovering the truth somebody shedding shining light on uh, on corruption but yeah, I was arrested, set up and arrested. Uh, the guy that took part in the uh, in the setup was a former police officer, dirty cop. Yeah. And um, I ended up going through one year and eight months of court. Had a, an electronic ankle monitor on my ankle. Was run through street theater skits, gaslighting, corrupt court, corrupt judge, corrupt. Uh, district attorney, the, the whole nine yards, uh, lost all of my money, everything I had left. Um, so I'll just leave that story at that. I, I have my YouTube channel. I have over 500 videos on my YouTube channel, and I've been documenting and reporting all of the events in my life that have taken place um, for the last three years, like I was talking about. So if anybody wants to check out my YouTube channel, just YouTube Michael Barden, oh, B-A-R-D-E. I'll add the link below. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, I figured, you know, the Air Force taught me to document and report specific events. Mm -hmm. So I, ha I have this talent, I have this, um, I have this training. Yes. And this is actually happening to me. So I figured, you know what, the best way for people to see actually what happens, because sometimes you just can't tell people what's going on, you have to show them. I thought, yep. you know what? I swore an oath to the Constitution and to the um, to the to the people of the United States, and um, I'm going to have to say some embarrassing things, and I'm going to have to show some embarrassing things that I'm going through. But that's what I'm going to do for people to understand what actually happens. Not to not to put fear into people, but just for them to understand, you know, the concept of of what we have to go through, and sure. what the, you know what's used against us. So. All right, I got I got way off track. So after the Department of Homeland Security was created, uh, they created what are called fusion centers here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And there are 78 fusion centers here in the United States. And what those fusion centers are, are centers that send out 
information to compartmentalized groups that take part in organized stalking and harassment, targeting of a targeted individual. Um, and that these, these compartmentalized groups are groups like uh, the FBI InfraGuard. Mm -hmm. uh, if you people can go to infraguard.org. Now they've removed some of the information off of that website since I've been telling people to go there. Uh, they partner with uh, 400 of the Fortune 500 uh, corporations, and mm -hmm. um, all of these corporations take part in this Stasi-type harassment of individuals to blacklist them, to, to gaslight them while they're trying to conduct business, um, which, which coincidentally, George Soros owns a large amount of stock in 47 of those Fortune 500 companies that partner with Infragard. I've done, I've, uh, done spreadsheets and, and lists of the, the people that... Uh, yeah, so anyway, so these fusion centers send out this information from the mass data gathering to target the individual, and FBI InfraGuard, just, there's 78 fusion centers. FBI InfraGuard just happens to have 79 groups that, that operate here in the United States. So each one group, InfraGuard for each uh, fusion center. And they also have um, groups like uh, Citizen Corps, uh, FBI, SSG, Secret Surveillance Group. If you go to their website, it even says that they follow individuals on foot in uh, public transportation and in vehicles. Um, and so the way, that they, the, the way that they've done this is Department of Homeland Security, they have something called See Something, Say Something, and it basically takes two individuals to report a threat, a quote, threat to... Uh, Department of Homeland Security, when, when they get that, they can send that to the FISA court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And this, the FISA court is uh, the most unconstitutional thing we have here in the United States. In the United States, we have um, the Constitution affords any American citizen due process. If you're accused of a crime, you have the right to go to court and know who your accuser is and mm -hmm. stand up for yourself and be able to respond to whatever you've been accused of. So in the FISA court, there is no due process. You're put through this secret court. Uh, they can say whatever they want about you. Uh, you cannot request a, well, you can request, but you're not going to get it, a Freedom of Information Act uh, mm -hmm. request to the FISA court because it's classified. So 10 mm -hmm. of these judges in the FISA court were appointed by Obama. So yep. imagine being somebody, you know, like myself, when I was in the Air Force, realizing, hey, Obama's not even a U.S. citizen. Here's how they here's how they forged his birth certificate. I had the training to understand how they did it, and I looked at the the uh, document. They didn't flatten the layers in the document, and I explained how that happened, and probably where it was made. And I was also talking about the Federal Reserve being a you know a corporation and you know all kinds of different stuff. Imagine somebody like me, and uh, th they say, okay, well let's uh, let's let's put this guy through the FISA court. They'll never know what hit him. And um, you know, we'll put them through this long, drawn-out process of psychological torture. And, you know, they'll never know. So, mm -hmm. so, so that's basically what's happening with thousands and thousands of American citizens. And, and I don't know how what the process is for sit other citizens around the globe, but like I said, this is happening to people all over the world. I've I've spoken with targeted individuals all over the world. Um, so that, that tells me this is a globalist new world order type thing. This isn't just something that's happening in the United States and um, uh, that's, yeah. Uh, where can I go from here, Charlie? I'm all over the place this morning. I apologize. I'm usually a lot better at speaking um, and keeping all of my information together, but. It's authentic. Uh, <laughs> Well, people can go to my other videos, too, and I've, I've got, you know, uh, just the last one I did on YouTube, I did on the fly yesterday while I was driving, and I've had put my information together a, a lot better. So here, here's, here's what I'll do. Um, I, I like to give people resources to look up and to, to do some research. So here's some, here's some, um, some videos, interviews with people that have, uh, have talked about some of this stuff uh, that people can look up. So... I've done some interviews on a show called Caravan to Midnight with John B. Wells. Uh, General mm -hmm. Flynn's been interviewed on this channel. Uh, a guy named Philip Haney, who actually worked for the Department of Homeland Security, 
who was an actual whistleblower. He was investigating um, a lot of different uh, terrorist cases, and he's the one that came out and told people that actual terrorists were scrubbed off of these terrorist watch lists, and uh, he was murdered, I'd say maybe six or seven months ago, for putting mm -hmm. this information out. The exact same thing I'm telling you right now, um, only I'm explaining the bigger picture. He was explaining just the Department of Homeland Security part, I'm explaining the, the bigger picture. So, uh, like I said, it's amazing that I'm even still sitting here right now. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, bullet flew through that window not long ago. That you, that that video is on my YouTube channel too. Um, so on on Caravan to Midnight, a lady that calls herself DJ. She didn't use a real name. She's an expert with artificial intelligence and computer systems, and she explains something called uh, Jade Helm and an AI uh, called Jade and Jade Two. Okay. And this is an artificial intelligence that is basically running everything. It's controlling uh, military uh, military military decisions, mm -hmm. kill lists. Um, military generals used to have to sit down and decide uh, who the targets were and how they were going to react. Uh, same thing with police departments. Etc. This Jade Two is is where all of this global mass data is going into, and this artificial intelligence is processing all of this information and sending out directives and orders to military, police, fire department, EMS, these compartmentalized groups that I was talking about. And it's a about a two and a half hour interview. Uh, but if people look up DJ interview John B. Wells, Caravan to Midnight. The, the interview is available on YouTube, or you can go to caravantomidnight.com and watch that interview. That's one of the most important interviews to watch, learn, investigate, uh, understand the bigger picture of what I'm explaining. It runs the entire, I, 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 I hate to even call it the targeted individual program because it's it's so broad. You know, the targeted individuals. Um, there are so many types of targeted individuals, and some of it is just. I don't want to say just, but people that were put on this current watch list, and some people have been targeted from from a young age. Their their family might have sold them into a non-consensual human experimentation program. There are over 140 MK Ultra variants. Um, I talk about some of that. A lot of things happen from, with me from a young age. Uh, my dad worked for Lockheed Martin, actually. Okay. Uh, so that might tell you something. Yeah. Uh, a lot of family members were Department of Defense contractors, uh, Department of Energy. Um, yeah, Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. My dad worked for Rocketdyne, who made the uh, the engines for the space shuttle. My mom was uh, she worked for the Federal Aviation Administration and other government entities, stuff like that. So, but a lot of targeted individuals talk about these type of things that happened to them from a very young age. I actually I did. God, I'm going all over the place here. What? Whatever. <laughs> uh, I did an interview with a guy named Larry Nichols. Speaking of the Clintons, yep. are you familiar with who Larry Nichols is? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, he was he worked directly for Bill and Hillary Clinton, and um, he did a lot of uh, dirty work. He he you know, and he explains that he he has some health issues, and he decided, you know what, I'm going to tell people about this. I want to I want to go out on a good note, and I want to tell people what I did, what they're responsible for. He did an interview with me on a show called uh, Crowdsource the Truth. And Larry explained to me that the, the Clintons, not just the Clintons, but their, their group, they had something called kill them while they're young. Yeah. And it didn't literally mean kill the person while they're young, although they're, they're notorious for just killing people. Yeah. But um, it meant that they identify empowered, empathetic uh, people with integrity that have potential to become leaders or influential in society later on in life and they would target that young person and make sure that that person was put through a series of long-term trauma-based events 
to basically just shut down their life and keep them from getting to their, their full potential. Um, so a lot of targeted individuals go through that. And uh, a lot of people have a hard time understanding, like who, who would take the, the time and effort, you know, to do that. You know, well, these people are, they, they look at the long, the long run. They think that they're here forever and they've got, they've got all the time in the world to do this. So they, they take the effort to do that. Um, mm -hmm. So I was the lucky recipient of going through that from a young age. Um, and then on top of that, I believe I was targeted through this FISA court um, and go, going through this terrorist watch list. Mm -hmm. Which in the, that, that DJ interview on Caravan at Midnight, she talks about how this AI is targeting patriots as terrorists and then enabling terrorists as patriots. It's completely backwards yeah. and upside down yeah. um, to, to protect the program. And uh, these people are being compensated, houses being paid, cars, uh, gift cards, a lot of... Uh, so Karen Stewart, actually, the lady from the NSA figured out that there was a company called William Patrick Cox, which is an undefined business in Florida that's connected to Lockheed Martin, was processing all of these gift cards. Now, when you use a gift card, they don't make you show your ID. You don't have, you just get a gift card. You go, here's my gift card. And they say, here, well, here, here's your item. Um, so that's one of the ways that they were, they were um, basically, basically processing a lot of this money with no, no paper trail. So, you know, if they're giving out $100 gift cards to these people, a few times a week, they, they can get anything they want from any store. If you go to the mm -hmm. grocery store here at the end cap of the, uh, the aisle, there's hundreds of gift cards for anything you can imagine that you would ever need. Yep. So yep. Uh, that's one of the ways they're compensated. A uh, lot, of, lot of different ways. Um, these people are like the, uh, the LARPs, the live action role players. The, uh, we, we call them gang stalkers. Yeah, you know, but they're 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 paid actors to to keep people in um, experiencing an alternate reality, a reality that does not exist. You know, yeah. and and these people literally follow me through town into stores, uh, repeat the information that I was just talking about, having a personal conversation in my home. They'll show up behind me in, in, in the store in line and repeat the exact conversation that I was just having, you know, over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. I'm doing a terrible job here at uh, at at staying on track, but you know, hey, whatever, whatever. People will you know get get the idea here. Um, uh, another uh, another couple videos that I think people should should look up. There's a guy named Dr. Robert Duncan. Have you ever heard his name before? No. Okay, so Dr. Robert Duncan was a Harvard graduate, and he worked for, uh, he was a contractor for the CIA, Department of Defense, uh, DARPA, mm -hmm. uh, military, bunch of, bunch of different uh, acronyms. And he created a bunch of, uh, a bunch of technology that is actually used on targeted individuals. He was told that uh, none of this technology would be used on American citizens and he thought okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna do my country a service not that any of this this technology should be used on anyone but he he helped create this technology and he explained some some of it a lot of it actually um, he's written two books uh, he became a whistleblower he, he wrote a book called uh, project soul catcher yeah. and explains a lot of the technology that he created. So um, here's some of the technology that is used on targeted individuals to try to get them to, well, one, to destroy, destroy their brain mm -hmm. and drive them nuts, and two, to get them to try to explain some of what's going on in their life to a psychologist, a psychiatrist, and get them uh, committed to a mental institution. Uh, one of the things he created is called V2K or voice to skull technology. They call it the voice of God, uh, where they will literally project voices into people's head. They're, they'll hear an audible voice. I've never received this. This is the one thing that I haven't experienced in all of the different things that targeted individuals 
uh, report as as no touch torture tactics. Uh, it's the one thing that hasn't happened with me. Um, so there's U.S. patents for all of this this technology too. Mm -hmm. So um, created voice to skull. Uh, something called synthetic telepathy, where they can literally send thoughts into your head where you can't decipher the, di the difference between your own thoughts and these synthetic thoughts, uh, which can be done through uh, these 5G towers, Gwen towers, capital G-W-E-N, a lot of the cell phone towers that aren't cell phone towers, uh, maybe through a microchip that's inserted into the body and connected with just like a cell phone. Um, but he has a, uh, a couple... Uh, interviews, speeches that he's done. One of them uh, that people should look up is Dr. Robert Duncan, in Intelligent Systems of Control, Part 1 and Part 2. And then he also mm -hmm. has another um, a presentation that he did for MIT. So Dr. Mm -hmm. Robert Duncan, full presentation, MIT. Just look those videos up, listen to those interviews, and he explains a lot of you know what he's um, helped create. Uh, one of the other things that's used on a targeted individual is called remote neural monitoring. Mm -hmm. So just like they can communicate and input information into a targeted individual, uh, they can extract that information so they can basically literally read a target a, a person's thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I'll go too much further into that. I try not to talk about a lot of the, the tech stuff. I, I try to talk about... Um, the things that are easier for people to absorb and to believe. Well, people can do their own research on that one, can't they? This oh, absolutely, Ab absolutely. And if they if they do take the time, you know, they can listen to these people that have created this technology. They can look up the, the fact that there are U.S. patents. Uh, they can see that hundreds of thousands of people are reporting this type of thing happening. And uh, there's no such thing as hundreds of thousands of people sharing a delusion that are reporting sure. this from all over the world. Um, it's If you put enough time and effort into it, you can come to the most plausible conclusion on your own and make your own decision that if this is happening or not. I've, I've said this the whole way through, that if you have a, an accurate moral compass as a human being, you can take information and put it inside you, make your own judgment. But if your moral compass is out of sync and you take that information, in it'll come out completely wrong and I've, I've i've been saying certain things about the quantum financial system the quantum voting system it was very interesting this morning i was sent a video by a, a, a beautiful lady that i've uh, interviewed before called anya and she interviewed a tarot card reader and uh, anya was basically asking this this lady who reads cards about the quantum voting system and it tied in exactly with what I said. And this is where we need to be able to connect to the spiritual side, to other sides, rather than just third dimensional, straightforward, looking at it inside a box. Um, and what, one, one or two of the things that you're saying about the way that they, the way that they think, America as a continent has many security agencies. And this is where your problem lies. They're all trying to outthink each other and outwit each other. It's exactly. not like you've only got one. There's 17 here. Exactly. And yeah. if they all thought the same way, and you can bet your life that one's investigating the other in a full circle. It's every the Delaware sing company formation system. Every single one of them, including the military. There's military exactly. intelligence investigating each other, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, uh, and then all of the acronyms on top of that. They're all investigating each other, sending honey traps into people's lives, sending... Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the term honey trap. Yes. I've, I've experienced this personally. Yes. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean they're, 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 instead of all working together, and being on the same team, they're all going against each other and they're fighting for these, these federal dollars. And uh, yeah. it, it's creating a, the downfall of our, our country and even globally. I mean, it, it, it yeah, it, it, you're exactly right. It's fascinating. It's, uh, 
it's it's look i was amazed because you have you have security agencies you have teams what have you it's no wonder there's been so much chaos over the past few years and the other interesting thing that fascinated me was that when donald trump got into power he didn't trust any of them he brought his own team in because he knew he couldn't trust them there's no other way to do it there's you, you know the, if they're compromised if they've they they've signed a letter a national security letter saying that they won't divulge any of their information um to, or spend 10 years in guantanamo bay they you know they, they they can't do anything for well they can they can but they have to take a risk and they have to do what's right instead of what's going to protect their job and mm -hmm. that, that's what a lot of this is about is um job job security and um, personal gain, gain, service to self instead of service to others. And, and a lot of these um, positions are supposed to be service to others. Government positions are supposed to, you know, you're serving. When, when, I, when I raised my right hand and I swore my oath to the Constitution of the people, I really meant it. I didn't mean I'm going to do this just to see how far I can get promoted and see, see how well I can do financially. You know, I, I really... I meant it, and here I am, and here I am doing this, and sure. I've lost everything for doing it. Hopefully that will change, and I'll be exonerated and indemnified eventually for everything I've lost. Uh, but more people need to do that, and I see that happening more and more now. More people are, are starting to realize, um, hey, you know, I, I need to do something for somebody other than myself. Not enough mm -hmm. yet, but, but, it, but it's happening more and more. I see the paradigm shift happening that's a beautiful way of putting it. The paradigm is shifting without a shift, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. And for those people in the spiritual world, they're feeling it. And those are people in the astro astro astrology world, the astrological side, are talking about the alignments of planets being a huge part of what's happening now. Those people in the numerology, it's all to do with the numbers right now. Um, and symbology, it's all coming together. And there is definitely a shift. There's a shift in people's perception, a shift in people's feelings, and it's tangible now. You can actually feel it. Um, and it's a very positive thing from my point of view, because when I started this journey, like you started your journey, we were the odd ones out. Yeah, and it's becoming too, yeah, exactly. So three years ago when I started talking to people about this I I'm old school I talk to people face to face I don't always just do this yeah. when I here in my community I speak with every single person that that I can even if they're a, a gang stalker one of the paid actors and they're they're harassing me and using uh, what we call directed conversation or neuro linguistic mm -hmm. programming to try to mess with my head I ignore mm -hmm. it. well I don't ignore it I'm, I'm vigilant I pay attention to what they're saying sure. But I talk to them, and I and I try to give them information that can help open up their mind a little bit and get them to think about what they're doing. Sure. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, but yeah, that's that's exactly what I'm doing. And oh yeah, that's where I started I, three years ago when I started talking to people about this stuff. They would give me what I call the fluoride stare. They just look yeah. at me or look at me like my hair was on fire if I had any. Um, like I'm just some crazy lunatic and I've seen it gradually change over the years to where instead of them being looking at me like I'm crazy now people will engage with me and say yeah I've heard of that and start yeah. asking questions or start sharing the information that they've learned with me and uh, I've, I've seen a big change in that. Um, and I've met some people that, uh, now, he, just here in town, that follow me on Twitter, on my YouTube channel, have sent me messages and thanked me for, you know, giving, me the, giving them the information that, you know, I did. And actually, here, I have one of, one of my cards left. Here's what I did. I, I built my own website and I put some of my videos on, on there with my links to my social media and I made these cards. Yes. Yeah. With my website and just kind of like a small yeah. explanation of what's going on and stuff like that, and um, I've handed out a thousand of these cards just here in my community to people that uh, that are 
complicit in doing this to me. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't just hand them a card and walk away. With each card that I hand out, I give them a, you know, a breakdown of what's going on. I talk to them as long as they'll talk to me or as long as I have time. Um, and that's, uh, that's something I recommend pretty much everyone to do. Whatever the thing is that you are studying, investigating, experiencing, no matter what, what it is, to talk to people in person and have conversations that's you know like the like you're saying we're a couple of guys talking at the pub that's how information is shared face to face um and and, and it's part of the reason that this whole covid thing is taking place because they don't want that to happen they don't want people having conversations in person they want people to be six yep. feet apart and they want them to have a mask on so it's it's harder to share information they, they don't want that face-to-face -face interaction and uh, for, for information to travel that way it's very interesting also the amount of people who say to me what made you turn off your television and look for, look in a different place because a lot of people just they're taking the television as news as being absolutely 100 percent certain and they're not questioning we're very very close to 50 50 at the moment. we last, last week we were about 58 percent of the people were still fast asleep but when we hit 50 50 that's when the balance shifts yeah getting very close to that right now um and it's very interesting I, I i'm watching it happen i'm enjoying it yeah and this this is going to be the first part of a two part because i'm going to come back to you for a second part we, we've got to there's i didn't even cover a tenth of what i, I wanted to tell you but that's kind of my fault i've been no it's fine I've this been, is fine it's just, look this is part one this is the foundation and part two is to follow. Sounds good.